Tenants, companies, and branches. Acumatica supports complex corporate structures involving multiple layers of independent companies, related companies, and branches. In this video, I explain key concepts and demonstrate creating a corporate hierarchy. To distinguish legal entities from reporting entities, Acumatica introduced a new object called a company and changed the name of the existing company to tenant. Here are some guidelines when setting up companies in Acumatica. Independent companies that do not share customers, vendors, or inventory items can be set up as tenants. The system allows you to import summary financial data so you can easily produce consolidated reports across tenants. Related companies are independent legal entities which share common operating data as well as the same base currency, financial closing period, and have a similar chart of accounts. These entities should be set up as companies. The system automatically creates balancing entries for intercompany transactions when two or more companies or their related branches are involved in the same transaction. Sales offices and reporting entities should be set up as branches. Warehouses, employees, and cash accounts are specific to each branch. Branches inherit the same ledgers as their companies. To demonstrate, I will convert the existing sales demo company from two branches to a larger organization with three companies and four branches. The existing headquarters branch has been moved under the products company. This company has two branches which need to file separate tax returns and require automated balancing of inter-branch transactions. I start with an existing sales demo data instance with two branches and upgrade it. I've opened tabs containing the relevant objects, tenants, companies, branches, and ledgers. After the upgrade, the two existing branches are automatically converted to companies with a single branch. To get to the new structure, I open a company and change the company ID using the Actions menu. This is not required, but since the company ID appears in several places, it makes the system easier to use. I can update the name to match the name of the new company and change the company type to with branches requiring balancing so I can add another branch and enable automated intercompany processing. In the ledgers tab, I define a single actual ledger and as many as budget, reporting, and statistical ledgers that are required. Next I move to the branches screen to configure the changes to my existing branch and add a new one. I add the new branch by defining a branch ID, branch name, and selecting the company. If required, I can modify the addresses, delivery settings, and employees associated with the branch. Notice that the Ledgers tab is pre-populated with the ledgers that were defined at the company level. After adding the new branch, I navigate to the Inner Branch Account Mapping screen so that I can set up automated Do To and Do From processing for the current branches. Next, I want to convert my VA company to a company with branches. In this example, my services branches are sales offices, which require branch-specific profitability reports, employees, and security. These branches share the same tax ID and the same set of financial reports. Transactions between Company 1 and Company 2 must create intercompany transactions. In this diagram, only Transaction 4 does not require balancing. To set this up, I follow the same process as before, except I change the company type to with branches not requiring balancing. In this example, I use the same ledger for all three companies, but this is not required. Ledgers provide some additional benefits in terms of reporting. After configuring my company, I create a branch and set up inner branch requirements. I will fast forward the video while I perform this task. When I return to the company screen, I can verify my work. In this example, I placed the Services West branch under the wrong company. So I'll navigate back to the branches screen and assign the branch to the correct company. The last task is to add a third company with no branches. 
Adding this type of company automatically creates the branch for compatibility with prior versions of Acumatica. In this example, my European entity does not change. I can easily consolidate transactions from Tenant 2 for reporting purposes, even though they are still running Acumatica 2017 R2. Adding a new company is straightforward. Define the required information and set the company type to no branches. Multiple companies allow me to define new security access roles. By having a separate role for each company, I can prevent personnel in the products company from seeing transactions in the capital company. My administrator, Maxwell Baker, will have the ability to see all companies and all transactions. To complete the process, I must add the new company to the interbranch account mappings. To save time, I will not show that in this video. In this implementation, I use unit sets to create an n-dimensional reporting hierarchy for my companies and branches. I will create a new unit set for my reporting. After setting up my entities, creating the new unit set is easy because in 2018 R1, the data source has been expanded to include companies as well as branches. After creating my companies, I can easily add branches to the tree structure underneath them. To demonstrate intercompany transactions and the newly configured reporting, I will process a transaction involving three different entities. Two entities will require balancing and the other two will not. First, I navigate to the Bills and Adjustments screen. Then, I switch to the Services East branch. The bill to my vendor has two lines. The first line benefits the Services West branch. This does not require any balancing. While the other line benefits the Products Wholesale branch, this will require intercompany transactional balancing. When I release the bill, the system automatically creates the accounts payable transaction and calculates a single balancing entry. As a final check, I can add the unit set I created called Companies to the Profit and Loss Report. On my report, I can see that the transaction appears in the Services West branch. On my balance sheet report, I can add my unit set called Companies for illustrative purposes. After running my balance sheet, I can drill into the report to see the specific intercompany entries that were created from the transaction that I just processed. For more information about Acumatica, visit our website or contact an Acumatica partner.